the, the NBA had a salary cap. They put it in in 85, I think. And I called Henry. I said, Henry, I got a stupid idea. Let's do a salary cap for hockey because we were constantly having to, I'll pay you 400 I'll give you 500 I'll give you 600 So we said, let's do a salary cap. If Henry wanted to pay a goaltender 1000 a week, I didn't care. You didn't pay a week, but you had a cap. It's 3600 That's what it started at. And that's how it got started. I go, I go see Henry and pick him up, and here we go. Three days later, here we go. Just left hockey in Peoria, Illinois, coaching in the IHL with the Peoria Rivermen. And I'd been behind the bench for 24 seasons, plus playing, I played and coached for eight of those, but the other 16, I was just a general manager and coach. And uh, I thought, my time is, I gotta get out of hockey. It was, it was getting where there was music in the room right after the game ended, the guys were wearing the long hair, and, and the agents were driving me crazy, you know. And so I said to June, I, that's it, I had enough, I'm coming home. And so we moved back to Charlotte. Well, then Mr. Bravin called me within 10 days. And I wasn't that interested with it. Uh, but he finally convinced me to come down and uh, play golf. My birthday was coming up in September, so I went down and ended up. He, I, I was very fortunate for him to hire me to, to, to help him uh, form the, EC, the ECHL. That's the first thing I asked him. I said, can you drive that Zamboni? <laughs> I, I spent a lot of hours in that Zamboni when the ice would get thick in the corners. I'd have to go out there half the day and just spin around. And then if the Zamboni driver didn't show up on a Friday or Saturday night, I'd be out there with my shirt and tie and suit on and zamming the ice in between the periods. So, But, so, it, but it got going, and uh, I, I, I have to thank this gentleman to my left here. He's the guy that hired me, and, and uh, I probably didn't think it at that time, but... For, for 29 plus, this will be the 30th year of this league. And then I made a mistake and, and made him commissioner. <laughs> and you, you know, he just wanted him to drive Yeah, you know, you know the, the biggest fine he ever issued was to me. I had to pay him $1,000. What, what? First night. First opening night. night. And I'll tell you that story. Yeah. Opening night, he comes to me before the game, he said, Michelle Lanowell is not playing in our building. He caused trouble in my building last year when we beat him out to win the All-American League trophy. I said, Henry, his, his contract's in the league office. That's it, he's playing. No, I said, okay, we're not gonna start, are we? So away he goes. So I watched the warm-ups going on and I'm up in the little press box, which was our office back in those days. And I see this guy standing on the ice along the goal line and the, the, the teams are shooting pucks at the goalie, the fast shots and, hit, and Nick Vitucci's in the net and he's directing him to the left. And I said, oh, no, that's Brabham down there. God darn it. So down I come. I said, what are you doing out there? I told you, Lana wet. I said, Henry, if that's how it's gonna be, Lana I'm, going, I'm going home. <laughs> so off the ice he comes. Game goes started about two minutes into the game. Billy Whitfield, big tough defenseman, who's he in a fight with? Michelle Lanouette. So Lanouette gets two minutes for fighting back in those days. If you had a shield on and you didn't take your helmet off, you got two minutes for fighting with a shield and a five minute major and Whitfield got five minutes. I back up in the booth, I look and there's a big mob of people around the penalty box and the visitor's penalty box. Who's the first guy? Mr. Brabham. <laughs> Down I come. What are you doing? He said, he spit on me. I said, how could he spit on you? Back in the All-American League days, it was, I guess it was such bad, the fans was dumping beer on the players. They put a glass roof on the penalty box, on the visitor's <laughs> penalty side. I said, how could he spit on you? He, oh, he come around. I said, I'm done, I'm going, I give him my keys. I said, I'm going home. I'm out, my, out the back door, in the uh, side door in my car. He comes out. I, I said, Henry, I, I can't put up with this, this house gonna be, he said, I said, here's the deal then. You're a $1,000 fine and you're out of your building. Well, I can't say what he said. <laughs> but, but and I said, I want the $1,000 check on my desk tomorrow morning. So I go back upstairs and he had his oil office back in the behind the arena, right on joined to the arena. Had a big window there with a Venetian blind. Well, every once in a while I see the Venetian blind open up and close. I said, well, at least I know where he is. So he's out of my hair for the night. So about well, two minutes to go in the game, I called down, his son Hank answered the phone on the speaker. I said, Hank, where's your dad? Oh, Pat, he's gone home, he went home years ago. 
hours ago. I said, well, you tell that old guy the next time the Venetian blinds open, it'll be another thousand dollars. <laughs> well, you could have heard the language coming <laughs> over the phone. But the check was on my desk the next morning. I called Henry, him that brainstorm about, <clears throat> about the salary cap deal. He said, that sounds good. Well, that's we just, I went by and picked him up, we took off. And he said, you mind if I hire a commissioner? I said, well, I don't care. He said, I asked him who you got in mind. I said, Pat Kelly. I said, who the hell's that? I don't think I'd met Bill. I don't know who Pat Kelly is, but if he's, if he's, good, if he's good for me, I don't care. You're paying him. I met, I met Henry because he took over the, Winds, the uh, Salem Raiders, the Salem, Virginia team, when uh, Whitey Taylor folded it, and that's how I met Henry. He offered me to, to be the commissioner, and he offered me uh, some, some money that I said, Henry, do you think I can move my wife up here for that kind of money to, from, from Charlotte to Roanoke? He said, well, wait, I got some other ideas. I said, well, I hope they're better than that idea. He said, I want you to be my arena manager. I said, I've never been an arena manager. He said, have you ever been a commissioner? I said, no, so I took the job. <laughs> so what he gave me for both jobs helped out, so I took the job. So. Well, I put him in an apartment that I owned. Over in the, under the star there. Yeah. Garden City. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then the, the league office was in the... Well, the league office was in a little press box. If you got between one desk, my wife and I sat at the desk, and the third person come in, she'd have to leave because there wasn't enough room for, for more than three people or two <laughs> people. And the time we had our, uh, you know, our, our machines that make the... Uh, doing the stats and st schedules and stuff. You know. So uh, I remember one time the guys, uh, a couple of officials brought me a Christmas tree there was no room to put the crew. We had to put the Christmas tree out in the hallway and decorate it. <laughs> so. And then once we got going, then he moved me downstairs to one of the offices in his, uh, in his uh, health club. Remember you had that yeah. office in the health club yeah. there after we got big, got a little bigger each year, so. Well, no, you do but, is what you got. Yeah, I know. This gentleman here was, he, it was his league and he knew and he was going to, he was very pleased the way it run was running, and I hope, and, and helped it build like it was today. Without Henry, there wouldn't have been an ECHL today, I don't think. That's my feeling, Bill. Hey, if, he hadn't, if he hadn't had the, the gumption to get up and go to, to well, get it he going. Had to, he, had to believe, he had to believe my stupid idea now. He, he wasn't going to give up. It's just I came up with something that I thought might work, and I called him and said, let's try it. There you go. Yeah. I said, oh, by the way, Henry, bring your checkbook. I, I ruined <laughs> me a while. You. Woodville driving. Okay. Yeah. We went to every state <clears throat> on the East Coast, I think. Didn't we go to Utica? Mm -mm. Yeah, we did go to Utica. Uh, what's, what's the t like team Utica that the... I thought you went to Dayton, but you didn't go to Dayton? Yeah. Yeah, 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 went yeah, yeah we went to Dayton. Yeah, we went to Dayton. No one. Of course, uh, it, wasn't, it had nothing nut or no hair. The team that stayed in the uh, league the longest up north. Uh, Other than Johnstown? No. Toledo? Toledo. Yeah, I you yeah Toledo, know. Ohio. Yeah, but you had to do all the dressing rooms and all that. We yeah, had to do dressing he, rooms. He didn't have. No. Nah. I don't really dressing know why we, room as big as this room. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know why we went by Knoxville. To be honest, we always really went by there because it, it just had to be south of Lexington. We would come back at what I got in my house. That's where we stopped there. So you were living in Lexington? No, we we had gone to Lexington, Kentucky. That's straight down, straight shot down to Knoxville. Oh, and that's how, all. How many cities did you visit? Oh wow, uh, ten more. I don't know. Ten or more. Yeah. Yeah, they just, uh, it was, it was, uh, and it only did, it was only gone three or four days. So it was pretty, pretty quick. But I knew, uh, I knew when, in Knoxville, when we went to Knoxville and reported Nick Gates, he passed away about a year ago, two years ago. And, uh, he was a reporter, yeah, he was a great reporter. Yeah, a good reporter, but, uh, he told me when I went in there, I said, you, you'll be broke by Thanksgiving. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll sell this building out for Christmas. And I did. The story I heard was that he, he, him and Bill went around to different arenas and said, Write checks. You know, he said, put the money in, because the, the arenas had gotten stuff 
by a few leagues that didn't pay their rent, then bo then boogied out during the seasons, and they said, uh, "You put the money in the bank. If we charge you so much a night, and you're going to play 30 home games, then we want that. If it's two thousand dollars a night, we want that sixty thousand in the bank, so we can draw it out for every game. And if you don't finish the season, then every night there was supposed to be a game, we take that money out of the out of the, uh, out of the bank and." So I think I heard you did that in, yeah. in Erie. In Knoxville? Yeah. In Knoxville. Mm -hmm. I had to do it in Erie. Yeah. Erie too? Erie in Knoxville. Yeah. yeah. They were talking to Lee and, and here's how much. Just wrote a check and here we go. Let's go play. Well, well, that's pretty much it. See, I heard he, had, I heard he carried around his money in a briefcase. Just and I had to roll quarters and use oh, the slot it? machines. <laughs> <laughs> so it was checks. And I, but, cause Cause I had seen him at McDonald's. That's all he knew. <laughs> Yeah, no, Henry, I, him and I drove on a few trips over the years to games, and, and we never ever stopped, stopped for a nice steak dinner after a game. It was either McDonald's Golden or, Arches and or Golden Arches. Nice or, in, that's it. Or we'd travel. I remember we'd, we'd drive from, from uh, Vinton, Virginia, where he had his team. We'd drive all day to get up to Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and then after the game, drive back home. Because I had to have the arena open the next morning for the, for the two. Uh, I was the arena manager that mor those mornings, and... Uh, uh, traveled up and down those highways and take officials with me and uh, but to watch this thing grow like it has grown in the 29 years it's I actually drove the hockey bus that's right there was nights I took a ride with him one night out to go from Vinton to to uh, to Winston-Salem and I get, I come from the back of the bus at Henry you either slow down or let the, or get all the players would get off the bus. He was going about 70 miles an hour. And if you remember old, whatever the road, highway is there from Winston-Salem to, to Vinton, Virginia, Winston-Salem was like a snake. And it, I forget the number of that highway. And what was that? Yeah, 58. 58. And, and he, where you sit in your seat, you're swaying. <laughs> and I said, you either stop the bus or we're getting <laughs> off it and we're walking. <laughs> so he slowed it down. The three teams were left. Bill and, and, and I had two of them. At that time, it was Johnstown and, and uh, Roanoke. I had just built the... Henry Dome. The Henry Dome. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think I had, what was it, 3,950 seats. Uh, I didn't think it was over 3,000. No, I wouldn't have been. Oh, God, Pat. I mean, fire marshal numbers. Fire marshal numbers are like three. Real numbers were well, 37, 38. Did you own Winston at that time, or yeah. was it? We had, me and John. You and John. Yeah. But they had no idea what we were doing, because I left, and when I picked up Henry, had a had a band back then, so I picked up Henry and go up there. Erie, meet Ronnie Hansen, and he talked Ronnie doing it. So now we're at four. So I said, well, we got to have at least one more. Well, that's when we started back down to Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, and come by Knoxville. And there was no dashers, glass, nothing over there. Not a thing. He sent his crew over, they built them overnight. Same way in Greensboro. When I went to Greensboro from Knoxville, he did the same thing. He sent his crew down, built the dashers. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, I, uh, I, I had some good cotton just work for me. Yeah, yeah. Was, I was in the construction business as well, uh, and 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 I got my boys together, and we were lucky. Salem let me use part of their old ashes, and we took them down and redid them for Knoxville. And then uh, Bill called me uh, later on when he went into Greenville, I mean Greensboro, and he said, I found you. <laughs> you Set of dashers. Uh, there's original ones. Uh, How the Greensboro uh, building? They were sitting on the middle of the field. There's nothing left of them. Just some <laughs> metal. Uh, what uh, good frame? Uh, they were rusty. And they were in the dump. <laughs> yeah, they were in the dump. <laughs> had been there for I don't know how and many years. And that four-wheel drive, we got to see them. We couldn't even get out there to them. But it was... I sold the Knoxville team, and next week I said, we, I got bored. This is August. I said, oh, I'll go to Greensboro. So I went to Greensboro, and I called Pat. And, and uh, Pat pulled a few strings, and off to Greensboro, go, we're in August. The season starts two months. And that was what year? 89. Yeah. So that was the second year. Second year. year. Yeah, you were only year. in Knoxville one year. I, I wasn't was sure. Knoxville one year. Yeah. And yeah, I went to Greensboro. Yeah. Then I, Tell him about when you owned that. 
Knoxville, the, the Civic Center manager made me sign the damn release. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't on the hook for anything. Made I, me was, a, I was slick. <laughs> and then a reporter comes so in. So th therefore, I, uh, legally, I guess I own four teams. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they never interfered. I didn't think it never interfered with any of them. Yeah. I mean, I ran it and, and then. Well, I didn't let uh, Erie or Johnstown interfere with the Roanoke team. Mm -hmm. In the same way, I wouldn't help either one of them. You know, that's one it, it thing. It was that, dog eat dog. That, that Henry was, every team did their own thing. Like, because Henry owned three teams, he didn't try to. When he knew one wouldn't make the playoffs or something, try to take players from one team to the other to build a better team. He was everything was up so on they the board. Set, everything was for the better of the yeah, league. Whatever they were literally the, Ronnie was I governor never, for Erie. I never cheated though. No. And John Daly was governor, and they would vote against Henry, make him so mad. They would vote against him. Oh yeah. Whatever was best for the league, that's what they all did. Yeah. It, was, it was it was it was a different time. You couldn't do that now. You know we were fierce competitors. Oh yes. Really. Uh, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> the the fights we almost got in with each other. But if Bill needed a bus, he knew where he could get one. Isn't that true? Yeah, or Zamboni. I had Zamboni go out in Knoxville. They were trying to do the street sweeper on the ice. That yeah. was hilarious. Maybe put one on the truck and yeah. down in Knoxville. Larry brought over. Yeah. Our first league meeting was uh, was Henry, Bill, and John Baker before a game in Winston-Salem in a, in a bar. If you remember that when we... And, and, yeah, I like and, bars. And John, bars Baker, John Baker's brother uh, came over with a beer, and I said, hey... No, it was a... It uh, was Red somebody. Dave Redman. And I said, this is a league meeting. You can't drink here. And they said, John, I said, John, this is a league meeting. Tell your brother, he's either, or Redmond, to either take your, his beer and get out of here or take the beer and come back and sit down with us. And so we finished the meeting. <laughs> That was great, those meetings back in those days with only three or four guys. Yeah. <laughs> Even when we had eight teams, he had Henry own three of them. So, and the other, the other five guys, and then we went to 11, we had eight guys, and Henry had his three. <laughs> and then 15, you know, th this thing just took off. And then we stayed at 15 for, the, for a year, and then went to 19, and then 21, and then, I don't know when he called me that night, I said, because the team had been there, so now, and it was his last game of the season, so I thought, well, if if, if he lets them go tonight, we're, and they have to play someplace tomorrow night, how are we going to get him back? It was their last game of the year at home, home game, and then uh, Mr. Cullen called me when he who owned the Norfolk team and said, you got to make sure Henry brings the team over to Norfolk tomorrow, because that's my, I got a sellout, and it's my last game of the season. He said, I said, well, he, he may need some equipment and stuff because some of the stuff could be still in the locker room. The players didn't take their skates in that home. He said, whatever they need, we'll have for them. And so Henry made sure his guys got on the bus and uh, they went to Norfolk and they used practice jerseys, different colors <laughs> for their lines. And, but they got the game in and uh, the season, was, that was his last game of the year there. So, and he didn't make the playoffs that year. So that, was a, that helped us with no playoff games in Roanoke or in uh, Vinton. That was normal. <laughs> I was very pleased when he uh, when he hired me. Not at first, I didn't know uh, how, because I remember working for him with with the Salem team, and I know how tough he was to work for, but it worked out great. Him and I had a few run-ins over the years with, when he used to lock the officials in the dressing room in between periods, and, and always yeah, and turn the hot. And the guys have said we got no hot water, Mr. Kelly. I said why? I find out I'd go back in the back because I knew the arena because I was a Zamboni and arena manager that year. And, oh, somebody must have turned the water off back here. <laughs> I look around, there'd be a guy with a big smirk on his face around the corner. Well, now I never did <laughs> physically <laughs> do it. <laughs> physically, yeah, yes. Now the the guy that did it owns a funeral home. That's right. Uh, Oak's funeral home. Yes. Well, I, I remember the one night I was there and, and the team, both teams were on the ice and no officials. So I'm up in that little press box, which was our office. And I go, what? So I, down I go. I bang on the door. I said, Throw me, send me, dump me the key out here. He said, no, we already tried that. that tell me to put a new, different lock on the door. <laughs> so I, and Oakley I, did that. I, I, I knew where the bolt cutters were. And I seen Brabham down there smirking. And I said, and I went down. 
and I cut the lock off, and I said, that just cost you $500. He said, that was a $10 lock you cut off. I said, well, you only owe me $490 then. <laughs> <laughs> it was on my desk the next morning. But he always blamed the funeral director. But the, between the two of them, oh, he knew. Now, the fat, I, I, <laughs> I, he, he actually did it. I fear he did, yes. Yeah. With your, and, with and, your and he, he, he used to always try to pick a fight with John Brophy. Oh, I'm sure. Every, every time we play. When we play Hampton, he tickled him to death. But I'm sure Henry never said, no, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> No, I didn't tell him not to do it. <laughs> I can't lie about uh, that. But no, it was a, it was a lot of fun that those first those first years and every year it's been, been been fun for me and I it, that I've been in this business for, for a long time and it's been nothing but exciting and fun.